This is a swarm of 10,000 bees. And this is me. And I'm attempting to remove those bees from the swarm trap into a bee box with no protective suit and only a really long stick. And this is me right after I got stung in the face. But before I can tell you exactly how I got into this predicament, we're gonna need to back it up a minute. Because for the last two years, I've had the goal to catch swarms of free wild honeybees in order to start an apiary for our homestead at as little cost to us as possible. And if you've seen our last bee video, you'll know that I was able to build a whole bunch of swarm traps out of trash and old buckets, and I was successful at catching three honeybee swarms. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link for it down in the description. Go check it out after you're done watching this one. And I promise at the end of that video, things got a little bit weird, so let's get into it. Now for starters, I did think it was particularly interesting that despite having more of these swarm traps on the property that we live on, and having several well-known bee colonies living on the property as well, the only bees that we caught were from the three swarm traps we put in town. Now my brother and I came up with a really good theory on why this might have happened. And we think that this happened because when you're in town, there's much less habitable area for those honeybees and those swarms to go. So there's a big competition between honeybee swarms and finding a suitable place to start a new colony. Which is why those bees will end up in a lot of areas where humans don't want them, like in your attic or inside a wall void. So when I gave them a better option in the form of a bucket lined in beeswax, up in a tree, secluded from all those noisy humans, they were quick to hop on the opportunity. Versus out where we live, the bees have thousands of acres to choose from on where to form a new colony. So naturally they're gonna pick the areas that they think are gonna be more successful, which makes sense. Cause why would you wanna try and form a new bee colony in an old chicken water like this or an old stinky trash can like this when you have much more natural habitat to choose from like old hollowed out logs and trees. But I'm not 100% sure on this. So if you have any suggestions, leave it in the comments below. Now that we have a general idea on why we were catching those swarms in town, let's move on to the first swarm we ever caught. Oh my gosh, y'all, we got one. I was super stoked about this because these were the first bees I've ever caught, but I had a big problem. They did not colonize inside the bucket though, they're on the outside. I designed these swarm traps so that the bees would go inside the bucket and start building their comb and nest inside the swarm trap. But what I didn't know at the time was some of those bee colonies won't start forming a nest inside that swarm trap. Instead, they'll start to form what's called an open air hive on the outside of those swarm traps or wherever they feel like is a good place. And because I was trying to do this project as cheap as possible, and to be honest, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to catch any bees, I didn't spend a lot of money up front getting the proper equipment I needed in case something like this happened. So that week, I made it my mission to get all the equipment I would need to get these guys removed from the swarm trap and safely taken back to the Quinstead. And keeping with the spirit of doing this project as cheap as possible, I built a smoker from a bunch of stuff I found at Goodwill and I was able to build a nook box from an old cooler and some scrap wood and then I was able to borrow a bee suit from my employer. Now that I have everything I need to take those guys off of that swarm trap and bring it back here, I headed back out there a few days later only to find this, they're gone. Every last one of them. Now I did think it was really weird that these beasts just up and decided to leave, especially since they had already started laying a whole bunch of brood. They even started filling some of those cones with pollen and honey. I did talk to one of my local beekeeper friends on why this might've happened. And he said this could've happened for a number of reasons. They could've just found a better place to live, or they could have just felt like it wasn't safe for them there anymore, which totally might have been my fault for disturbing them in the first place. He also told me not to be discouraged and just to keep at it and eventually I'll be able to catch another swarm. So a month or so rolled by and that's when I got a text from my brother and he sent me a picture of some bees starting to gain interest in one of our other swarm traps in the back of my parents' neighborhood. So I quickly grabbed all my equipment and headed over there. And sure enough, a swarm was just starting to show up to the swarm trap, and after a couple of hours, the rest of the swarm showed up as well. So I monitored them for a few hours just to make sure they were going inside that swarm trap this time, and sure enough, they were. All right, it's uh, getting towards the evening time, and this looks great. It looks like most of them are colonizing inside that bucket. It looks like there's a bunch of workers hanging around the outside still, so if I lose some workers, not that big of an issue. 
because I think that queen is still gonna be inside that bucket. She's gotta be in there somewhere. So I waited until nightfall just to make sure those bees went inside the swarm trap. There were a few hanging around the outside still. So I put my bee suit on. Getting suited up. Lit up my homemade smoker. And with a little help from my brother, I was able to convince the rest of those bees to go in the swarm trap. And once I had those bees inside the swarm trap, I went ahead and covered the hole with a piece of mesh. That way they can't come out. And just for good measure, I put a pair of basketball shorts that I had knotted up at the ends over the entire lid of that swarm trap just to make sure those bees aren't able to get out at all while we transport them. After that, I was able to remove the swarm trap from the tree and securely place it in the back of my truck. Look, you can see all the bees inside there just chilling. They're not really moving at all. It's awesome. Yeah, dude. Pretty calm right now, which is good. That's what we want. After that, I was able to safely transport them back here to the Quinstead where I set them up on a new tree. All right, we'll come back tomorrow and uh, we'll let them out. All right, it's the next morning. Let's let these bees out. So I went ahead and lit up my homemade smoker and put on my full bee suit, which in retrospect wasn't 100% necessary because these bees were very docile. They weren't trying to attack me or anything like that. But there are some aggressive bees in parts of our area, so I'm glad I took these precautionary measures just in case. All right, they are free to roam around. They actually stayed pretty dang calm. Not one of them came at me, not a whole bunch of them came out or anything like that. So let's see if we can get a shot inside there. Look, there's a bunch of them in there. I can kind of see. So. Now I didn't immediately remove these guys from the swarm trap for a couple different reasons. One, I didn't have a V box yet still. And two, I wanted them to become more established inside that swarm trap, start laying brood and start collecting honey and pollen and all that stuff. So that when I do remove them from there, they have all those resources and I can put those resources in a bee box with them, making it much less likely that they will leave that bee box once I do transfer them. But mother nature had other plans for me. The summer of 2022 was one of the hottest summers on record, especially here in Texas. All right, the heat continues across Texas. It has been unrelenting. Dangerous heat wave across the south turning deadly. Several cities saw all time record highs. The record heat in Texas happening right now. It is so intense. It caused the road to buckle. And because it was such an early summer, it cut the spring very short, which meant all their resources quickly died off and they had very little chance of survival. Because during the springtime, there's plenty of blooming flowers, a lot of nectar and a lot of pollen going around, which gives those swarms the best chances of survival when they're forming a new colony. Even though I did try to feed them throughout the summer, slowly by slowly, their numbers dwindled until they were completely gone, which really sucked because by this point we were way past swarm season and I had to wait again until next year. That is until fall set in and it started to rain, temperatures dropped back to normal temperatures and things started blooming again. And that created what's called a false spring for the bees. The bees thought it was springtime again, so they started to swarm again. And that's when we caught our third swarm in my parents' backyard. All right, looks like we caught ourselves another swarm here. And this is really weird because it's September now. We're way past warm season. And since it was fall and I knew winter was right around the corner, I just decided to leave those bees alone and give them the best opportunity to build enough comb and honey to survive the winter. And to my surprise, they did actually survive throughout most of the winter, but unfortunately, just because they didn't have enough resources through the winter, they didn't make it. Oh no. Oh man. Dang, that sucks, that really good comb. Now this was sort of a bummer, but I wasn't really expecting those bees to make it through the winter anyways. So it wasn't very detrimental to me and I wasn't that disappointed about it. So that winter, I decided to change my focus up a little bit. I wanted to learn as much as I could about swarm trapping and beekeeping. That way when I do catch another swarm come spring, I'll be ready for them. And because I have a job where I spend a lot of time at a lot of different people's houses, Anytime I noticed that one of my customers had bees or was a beekeeper, I would strike up a conversation about beekeeping and I would try to learn from them as much as I could. And this became such an amazing resource because not only was I able to learn from people with real firsthand experience, but I was also able to learn about how swarms and bees behave in our local climate. And I have to say, the beekeeping community has been one of the nicest and most welcoming communities I've ever been a part of. 
not only were they super encouraging about what I was trying to accomplish, I also got to learn different tips and tricks on how to be successful at beekeeping. I even had a customer give me a full-blown hive box with all the frames and everything. So that way, when I did catch another swarm, I would have that hive box ready to go for them. And now with all my newfound knowledge and encouragement, I was ready to start swarm trapping again as soon as spring rolled around. So at the beginning of the spring, I headed back out to my swarm traps to start rebaiting them again, and that's when I found this. All right, so I'm back here checking the swarm trap again. Oh yeah, didn't even have to rebait or nothing. We got a swarm hanging on there. It just looks like they're bearding off of there right now. I don't see any comb yet. And because this was the same swarm trap that I caught the first swarm on that ended up leaving, I didn't want to waste any time in getting these guys off of that swarm trap and into my bee box. But I kind of had a problem. If you remember earlier, I said I was just borrowing a bee suit from my employer. Well, I had to turn that in. And because I wasn't expecting there to be any bees on this swarm trap yet, I hadn't picked it back up from them to use for the swarm season. But I did have my bee box on me. So I strategically placed that bee box underneath that hive. At first, I just tried to lure them in there with some lemongrass oil, but they weren't really going for it. All right, I'm gonna set it down in here. See if they do anything. I don't think they will. I think I'm gonna have to shake them off onto there. So I decided to just try to get these guys into a bee box without a bee suit on, which is actually pretty common because while those bees are swarming, it's actually when they're in their most docile state and least aggressive. So a lot of beekeepers are actually able to trap and transfer swarms without a bee suit at all. Although I wouldn't recommend it, it definitely does happen a lot. So after that, I decided to try and knock as many of those bees off of that swarm trap into the bee box. Uh, I got a little impatient, so I just grabbed a stick and I dropped some of them into there. They're not too aggressive. A little, a couple of them came after me. Got one little sting on my finger here. Not a big deal. I'm gonna see if I can drop the rest of them into the hive box with this long branch here. All right, here we go. We're gonna drop them in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, one got right on my face. I don't know, one got right here. Stings a little bit. It's not too bad. They didn't follow me though, so that's a good thing. Now, I did get stung a couple times, but it wasn't really that big of a deal because I already knew I wasn't allergic to bees. But the good thing is, is that these bees weren't super aggressive. Only one or two of them stung me and the whole swarm didn't try to come at me. So I let them calm down for a little bit. Checking out that bee box, which is good. That's what I want them to do. All right, looks like they've calmed down quite a bit. A lot of them have gone back up there and uh, rejoined up there, but a lot of them are still in here. So I'm gonna try and get the lid there and slide it back on. And then hopefully it'll just lure the rest of everybody else to come on down in here, including the queen. And then I slowly, very carefully put the lid back onto that swarm trap. And that's gonna force the bees to go in and out the entrance only in the hopes that they will recognize that bee box is a better, more suitable place for them. And they will all start to colonize in there, forcing the queen to go with them. So I went ahead and left them overnight and came back the next day, only to find they just all went back up to the swarm trap. I don't know. I really don't know what I'm doing, I guess. So they came out of the box and just said, you know, screw this box, we're going back up here. Which tells me that's probably where the queen is still, so. So at that point, I knew that if I wanted to get those bees into the bee box, I was gonna have to get the queen. And luckily, this day, I did bring a bee suit and I did bring my smoker. I guess we're gonna get the bee suit on and uh, try and get them all put in the box. And hopefully we'll get the queen and put her in there too. Now that I had my smoker and I was fully protected in my bee suit, I was able to start scooping handful after handful of bees off of that swarm trap and into the bee box. Queen Bee, where you at? Holy moly, there's that many. Oh, the bucket broke too. And this was the first time I've been able to be hands-on with the bees like this. And I have to say, it was a truly awesome experience to be in the midst of thousands of bees like this, all flying around you and being able to put them in your hands and into a bee box. 
and it's an experience I would highly recommend to anybody if you ever got the opportunity to do it. After I was able to get most of those bees off of that swarm trap, I went ahead and took it off the tree just to make sure they don't go back up to it. And that's when I saw this. Yeah, look at them. Look at them all. And what these bees are doing, they're sticking their little butts in the air and they're using their wings to waft out a pheromone that tells all the other bees, hey guys, the queen's over here. She's safe and sound. Everybody should come join us over here. So that's when I knew we had the queen inside the box. So at that point, I just put the lid back on the box and slowly by slowly, all the bees started to congregate inside that box. So I decided just to let them be, pun intended, and I was gonna come back that night when it was dark to make sure they all went inside that box. All right, we're back here at night. I forgot to record as when I first came up, but I looked in the hole and uh, they are definitely all in there. So I stuck this piece of board in there, prevent them from uh, coming out while we transport them and everything. So let's get them um, moved back over to the truck. So I was able to safely transport those bees back here to the Quinstead, where I set them up on a pallet right next to our pasture. All right, well, we got the bees moved back here last night and it is the next morning. So I'm gonna let these guys out here. I don't have a bee suit on, so hopefully they won't be too angry with me. And one of the things I learned from my beekeeping friends is whenever you transfer a new swarm or a hive box or something like that, you're supposed to let them stay in that box for several days and let them calm down. That way, when you release them, they don't all just fly off and leave. I, however, decided not to do that because just like last year, the summer was coming on very, very early and temperatures were already starting to reach up into the upper 80s and lower 90s in our area. So I decided just to let them out because I was too afraid with that bee box being all closed up like it was, they were just gonna get too hot and end up dying. So I decided just to take my chances. Well, there they go, they're out. They're gonna send out some scout bees, orient themselves and get to work, I guess. And it seemed like they were all good to go. So me and Sam went into the town for a few hours to go check out an awesome local car show. And when we came back, we found this. All right, well, it's been several hours. Notice not so many bees flying around and everything. So I stuck my camera in there, didn't see much and I popped it open, but there's a few bees left, but it looks like they left that entire swarm. All those thousands of bees that we had got had in here, just gone, which sucks. Since I figured they had just swarmed off, they might still be around the property. So I decided to check around the property and sure enough, I found them on one of our other swarm traps. All right, so I was checking the swarm trap that's close to those, my beehive and look at here. Looky here, looky, looky, we got hooky. Now I didn't immediately remove these guys off of that swarm trap and back into that bee box because I didn't want them to flip out again and leave somewhere else where I wasn't gonna be able to find them. So I decided just to let them chill there, calm down for a little bit, and hopefully start building up some comb and some resources. That way, when I do move them off of that swarm trap into the bee box, they'll have those resources there with them, making it much less likely that they're gonna leave that bee box. I also talked to one of my good friends, Taylor, who's a beekeeper as well, and he said he had a material called queen excluder that we can put over the entrance of that hive that prevents the queen from leaving that hive, but it doesn't prevent the workers from going in and out and doing their job. So that way it forces the queen to stay inside the hive, which forces the rest of the hive to stay there as well. But unfortunately, before we could get back out there and do that, they ended up leaving. All right, well, it's been a couple days and the bees left. I don't know where they went. They're not inside or anything. They left a little piece of comb here, so. I don't know, I guess we'll look around and see if we can find them anywhere. I did end up catching one other swarm that season, but before I could remove them from that swarm trap, they ended up leaving as well. And once again, we were past swarm season, and if I wanted to get bees, I was going to have to wait again until next year. Or at least I thought. If you remember earlier, I talked about how I would pick the brains of any of my customers that had bees. Well, one day I was at a customer's house, Mrs. Treat, this is her right here. Aww. And I noticed that she had two beehives in her backyard. So naturally I struck up a conversation about how I've been trying to catch swarms so I could start an apiary of my own. And that's when she informed me that those bees actually used to belong to her husband who had just recently passed away and that beekeeping was a big part of his life and he started keeping bees at the age of nine. It was super awesome to learn about her late husband and how much he loved bees and all the other cool stuff he was into. 
She also informed me that since her husband had passed away and she's unable to take care of the bees, she was looking to rehome them. Now she did talk to one other beekeeper who was interested in taking the bees, but I told her if they ended up following through, just to give me a call and I would gladly come take them. So after a few days, her son gave me a call and told me that if I wanted the bees, they were all mine to take. So once again, I enlisted the help of my brother. All right, me, Pat, and Sam are gonna go check out these bees and we're gonna kind of get a game plan down on how best it is gonna be to move them. So let's go there. And I'm eating banana right now. Sam's eating a banana Sam's right now. Banana. With chips. With chips. Alrighty, well, these are the two hives we're gonna be taking. The game plan is hopefully we'll be able to back the truck up to here and then move those into the truck. I'm gonna try and get some ratchet straps around them tonight. But yeah, that's the game plan for right now, it looks like. After we got our game plan down, we came back later that night and we just took a couple rags and we used those rags to stuff all the entrances of the bee boxes. That way they can't come out while we're transporting them. Just for a little bit of extra protection, we took some duct tape and we went around the edges of all the hive boxes just to make sure we were able to plug up any little holes or anything like that. After that, we took a couple ratchet straps and we ratchet strapped each one of those hive boxes together. That way, when we transport them, we're not gonna run the risk of them falling apart and us losing those bees. After that, we carefully loaded them into the back of the Danger Ranger. All right, we got both beehives loaded up. All the bees are closed in there. Really hardly lost any bees, which is awesome. So we're gonna get these guys strapped down and start heading back to the Quinstead and then uh, get them unloaded there. After that, we were able to safely bring them back here to the Quinstead where we got them set up in our temporary apiary spot, which honestly is just a few pallets stacked up on each other, but it'll do the job for right now. Alrighty, well, we got our hives back here on the Quinstead, all set up and everything. So we'll come back in a couple of days and open these up, let the bees out and uh, see how they do. We'll see y'all then. And this time, I didn't immediately let them out the next morning because I really wanted these guys to stick around and not end up leaving like our last swarm. So I let them sit inside those bee boxes for two or three days before I let them out. Okay, well, it has been a couple of days, so I'm gonna let these bees out. All right, well, they are both out and open. These guys in the white hive are not happy. I am very glad I have a bee suit to use. This red hive, they're super chilled out. They're hanging out inside the hive. I will see y'all in a couple days. Check up on the hives and everything. All right, well, it has been several days and wouldn't you know it, the bees have decided to stay. Look at these guys going in and out, just working hard. Both hives did not abscond. They both stayed here. And I'm happy to report that six months later, not only are these bees doing well, they are just absolutely thriving. Now we're not quite done with these hives yet. We're gonna have to open them up, check on the general health of the entire colony. And if we're lucky, maybe even get a little bit of honey out of them. But we're gonna save that for a future video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I wanted to say thank you to everybody in the beekeeping community that's helped me out along this journey. Because without y'all, I don't think I would have been able to accomplish this. And I wanted to give a special thanks to Mr. Treat and the entire Treat family. Thank you for being so dedicated to beekeeping for such a long time. It truly is an amazing accomplishment. And even though I was never able to meet you, you seem like a truly amazing person. And I'm very honored to be able to help carry your legacy on through these bees. And I hope that one day I might be able to pass it on to somebody else. So Mr. Treat, this video is dedicated to you. Thank you. And thank you to all the viewers who made it to the end of this video. I know this video has been a long time coming. A lot of y'all have been asking for updates on the bees and what's going on. So thank you for subscribing and thank you for continuing to support the channel. Thanks for watching. I think we found a new profession for us. We both like being awake at night and doing things that are slightly exciting. And being outside. And being outside.